Jesus in today's scripture, which is found in Matthew 13, talks about the parable of the weeds. Hear these words. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and, the, and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted in the formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did these weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them out? No, he answered. Because while you were pulling the weeds, you may also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And it is at that time that I will tell the harvesters, first, collect the weeds, tie them in bundles to be burned. Then, Gather the wheat and bring them into my farm. May God add his blessing to this word. We talked about the gifts of many people. Missy back here had the gift of finding just the right pictures. When I emailed the title of the sermon to me. Isn't this awesome? Found a picture of the person sowing the seed. Then he showed the picture of the birds eating the seed out of the garden. And, this, and the seed that fell in the rocky part, and then in the thorny part. And those, the, those that finally grew in the good soil and bear fruit. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Today's title is called, The Garden is Doing Fine. My garden is doing fine. We've had lots of rain this year. In fact, some of the plants in our our, our large pots on the deck are dying because there's so much water standing in there. Looks like a swamp. Yeah, I know. I got to get hole drilled in the bottom to push the water. <laughs> Add it to my to-do list. Remember the nursery rhyme about contrary Mary? It asks the question, Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? We all know that, especially us older ones. This parable of Jesus today asks the same question of the church. You see, it's all about the seed in four different soils that receive it. It's a parable of how different people respond to the gospel. Here, this is about the stolen seed, first of all. Jesus said, a sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trodden underfoot. And the birds of the air devoured it. Anyone who has ever planted a garden knows the ruins of crows. And here we have a great mystery of faith. In his explanation of the parable, Jesus said, The ones along the path are those who have heard. Think about that. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts. That they may not believe and be saved. That's referred to in Matthew 13, verse 19. There was a time in my life when the devil took the seed from my heart. And Jesus said this. Do you know that the late atheist Madeline Murray O'Hare was reared a Presbyterian? New York's son of Sam, the serial killer, was a former Baptist? What happened? Jesus said this, the ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the seed from their hearts. Do you suppose that's what happened to Madeline O'Hare, it's not the same. To you at one point in your life, or to me. Listen to this story. After buying a new home, the owner began to landscape it himself. Sounds familiar. Since it was his first attempt to plant a lawn, he was very careful to do everything according to the book. 
He prepared the soil, put in a sprinkling system, and then waited for just the right day. When that day came, he seeded the lawn and rolled it and watered it. For the next three weeks, he watered the lawn daily, shooed away the birds and his cat, and waited eagerly for the first blade of grass to peek through. But except for a few weeds, nothing happened. Then one Saturday morning, he discovered, while he was walking in the garage with his wife, discovered a grass, a bag of grass seed still in the garage. And the wife turned to him and she says, what in the world did you plant? And with a sigh, the man replied, kitty litter. <laughs> <laughs> kitty litter. You might wonder, looking at some people, if bad seed sort of kitty litter, if you will, weren't sown in their lives instead of the gospel. Jesus assures us that there is nothing wrong with the biblical gospel. It'll grow if given the chance. The problem is that Satan comes along and snatches away the seed. You know how it is. You begin to share your faith with someone. You mention salvation, sin, faith, peace, repentance, and the Holy Spirit. The other person looks at you rather blankly and says, whatever are you going on about? And changes the subject. Or they say, yeah, yeah, all in good time. And then they probably forget That's the story of the stolen seed. Now the other part of the parable is about rocky soil. That seed that falls along the rocks. The second type of response Jesus said is likened to the rocky soil. Seed falls on this ground, springs to life. It says it has no depth of root. It withers away in the heat of the sun. You've seen no doubt a bonsai plant cedar tree is planted in a small hole. It grows, but it remains dwarfed because the gardener clips its, its tap roots. So many come limping into the church, hurt, divorced, bitter, broken, confused, and hearing the gospel, they jump for it with all of their eagerness of a drowning man grabbing for a lifeboat. And for a few months, they can't get enough. Then the gust of emotion dwindles. They find out God doesn't always come when you whistle. The Bible study is a chore. They want to be selective about obedience. And the next thing you know, they're out the door. They left. There was no roots there fell on rocky soil. Remember, Jesus said it, it'd be like this. Where there's no depth of soil, he said, it would be shallow faith. And the third area that seed may fall is in thorny. A third soil Jesus called thorny ground. Jesus put it this way, and some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew with it, and then choked it. Indeed. Every gardener knows the menace of crabgrass, kudzu, and the thistle. Jesus, in his explanation of this parable, said, As for what fell among thorns, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. And their fruit doesn't mature. I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen in my own life from time to time. I once saw a barn of overgrown kudzu. One rainy day, the added weight caused the building to collapse. 
know, it's like that in post-Christian Europe today. Churches are everywhere. Splendid cathedrals are everywhere. But they are mostly empty. The people are out working, playing, sleeping, holidaying, celebrating with zero time for the things of Christ. And again, there is no fruit. But I don't despair. Jesus also spoke of the seed that falls on good soil. This is the fourth soil that we talked about, which is fertile and deep. And he said, and some seed fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. These are the persons Jesus explained who received the word and carefully allowed to take root in their lives so that fruit is born. And what is fruit? In Galatians 5.22, it calls it love. This is a reminder of the great commandment in Matthew 22. God asked us to love Him with all of our intellect, our emotion, and our will. And to love our neighbors as ourselves. But what happens with all of this seed that gets sold in our lives and in the lives of others? Well, hopefully conversion happens. None of the first three soils can, in any sense, be called conversion, however. Each of these, these three ends with no life in the seed. No response to the word that they receive. Clearly in this parable, Jesus points out the three enemies of faith are this. The world, the flesh, and the devil. He's out there all the time. You see, the world is like the weeds, Jesus said, choking the life from the soil. It must be handled according to 1 John 2, verse 15, where it says, Love not the world. And the flesh is like shallow soil, Jesus said, allowing for no enduring roots, no deep growths. It must be handled according to 1 Corinthians 6, 18, and Romans 12, 18, where it says, make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And the devil is like the seed tilted in earth, Jesus said, packing away Uh, but in 1 Peter, verse, chapter 5, verse 8 through 10, it says, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. All you gotta do is say, Get behind me, Satan. I use the words of Jesus when I'm tempted. I, get behind me, Satan. That's what Jesus said. Don't be afraid to paraphrase Jesus or to use his words. Just say, Get behind me, Satan. not set our affections upon it. It does not last. The flesh we run from, like Joseph when tempted by Potiphar's wife, he fled the house. Genesis 39. Ah, uh, but Satan will stand against. In the armor of Christ we are strong before him. In Ephesians 6, and it says in the following verses, challenges us not to flee the devil, but to stand against his wishes. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The trouble is, too many Christians get confused. Don't we? We cling to the world in desperation as if there is a no better world to come. We flee in terror when Satan attacks. When it comes to the flesh, we take a firm stand saying, I can handle it. Really? Like Samson did, who put his head in the lap of the lap on the neck. Hmm. In other words, we zig when we should have zagged. We run when we should stand. 
And we stand when we should run. So in conclusion, I want to tell you a little story about the minutes I read in a local garden club, News Weekly. It says this. The day lilies we planted around the courthouse all died for the third straight year. So the club voted to replant the lilies and also to adopt as our club motto to dream the impossible dream. <laughs> they were just kept on dreaming and hoping instead of taking a look at the soil. A. In the midst of so much chaos and poor response to the gospel in our world and churches today, Let's remember the four soils and how Jesus said it would be like this. It's going to be like this. It's never going to be perfect. Let's also remember, though, that all conversions are miraculous. And that there is hope so long as Jesus keeps sowing his word in the world. And he wants you to partner with him to do just that. Perhaps there is one of you reading this who is primed for conversion right now, or hearing this. Somehow the word has gotten past you. You've been attacked by the birds or Satan. And there are some of you who choose to receive it, to act upon it. God wants you to know He loves you. He has paid the penalty for you on the cross through his death. He simply asks he simply asks you to receive him by faith in your life. Believe in him and trust him. Robert and I were talking about that this morning. We're going into retirement really scared, really nervous. We had to ask ourselves, are we clinging to the world? Cleaning all that money we were making? Hmm. Or are we putting our faith in Jesus and trusting Him that He will provide for us? He says, Look at the birds of the field, and they do not want for anything. There's a little plaque hanging in our dining room that says, Jesus, God will provide everything you need. We put that there as a reminder to keep our faith up. So that the devil won't come along and pluck the word from our heart. So that the birds don't sit out there and pilfer away every seed. So he wants you to believe in him and trust him and have faith. But he also wants you to welcome him into your life. Like a seed falling into soil, he will dwell in you and take root to bear fruit. To bear the fruit of love in you. One doesn't have to understand it right now. Just get started. Just say yes to Jesus. And say yes to you. May God have his blessing on this one.